God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. On Christian Ethics by St. Basil the Great. The Beginning of the Ethics, 1.1 that it is necessary for those believing in the Lord first to repent according to the preaching of John and of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. For those now who do not repent are more severely judged than those condemned prior to the gospel. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 11, 20 through 22. Then he began to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Kawar Zine! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And what follows? 1.2 That now is the time for repentance and for the forgiveness of sins. But in the coming age is the righteous judgment of retribution. Matthew 18.18-19 18, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He says, that's actually Matthew 9, verse 6. But that you know that the But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. John 5, 28-29 For the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Romans chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Or do you presume upon the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But by your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath and revelation and God's righteous judgment. For he will render to every man according to his works. Acts 17, 30-31 The time of ignorance, God, the times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now he exhorts all men everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world. 1.3. That it is necessary for those who repent to weep bitterly and to exhibit from the heart all else that is proper to repentance. Matthew. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord spoken to him. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Chapter 26, 75. 2 Corinthians. But he who comforts the downcast comforts us. But he who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me. Chapter 7, 6 
through 7, and a little further. For see, for see what eagerness this godly grief of yours has produced in you. What eagerness to clear yourself. What indignation. What alarm. What longing. What zeal. What punishment. At every point you have proved yourself guiltless in the matter. Chapter 7, verse 11. Acts. Many also of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who practiced magic arts gathered their books together and burned them in their presence. Chapter 19, verse 18 through 19. <clears throat> One point four. That for those who repent, retreat from sins alone is not sufficient for salvation, but it is necessary also for them to bear fruits worthy of repentance. Matthew. But when he said, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not presume to yourself to say, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. But even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruits is cut down and thrown into the fire. Chapter 3, 7 through 10. 1.5 That after the release from this life is not a good time for good works, inasmuch as God has patiently measured out the present time for doing what pleases Him. Matthew then the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Whichever were foolish, when they took their lamps, took no oil with them. But the wise took their flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom is coming! Come out to meet him! Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you, but rather go to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Chapter 25, 1 through 12. Luke, strive to enter by the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able, when once the householder has risen up and shut the door. You will begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Chapter 13, 24 through 25. Second Corinthians. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. Chapter 6, 2 through 4. And finally, Galatians 6.10. So then... 
As we have opportunity, let us do good to all. The end of point one of St. Basil the Great's On the Christian Ethics, translated by Jacob Van Sickle. And my friends, please, please go to the internet and find this book online and buy it for your family. St. Basil the Great on Christian Ethics. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, granting to the faithful victory over all adversaries. And by the power of thy cross, preserve thine estate.